Hello, and thanks for watching another episode of ARFCOM News. Today I want to tell you about how the ATF and FBI got caught watching over 1,000 law-abiding gun owners, the new study proving gun control doesn't work in Massachusetts, and I'll tell you what the new mystery gun is from Springfield Armory. But before we get started, I want to introduce you to the bold, uncompromising flavor of small batch barrel-aged night vision from TNVC.com. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNVC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. Now I know the FBI and ATF VAFT. were caught multiple times illegally spying on Americans, fabricating evidence, engaging in grossly racist behaviors, and generally running roughshod over the U.S. Constitution in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s and, and 2000s. But it's important to note the people responsible never faced any consequences whatsoever for their actions, so there's no reason to expect such despotism, corruption, and criminality to remain in the modern-day FBI and AFT. <laughs> I mean, only weirdo conspiracy theorists believe the federal government is actually spying on them, right? According to a recently released FOIA request filed by the Gun Owners of America back in April, the AFT and FBI have been spying on over 1,000 Americans who passed background checks in order to buy a gun, just in case they might decide to commit a crime sometime in the future. Now, to be clear, we're talking about folks who have not committed any crime and who passed the next check, but the Fed boys think they might commit a crime. What crime are they suspected of thinking about maybe committing sometime in the future? Unclear. What suspicious actions did they do to get the Fed boy's attention? Unclear. Exactly what sort of scrutiny and surveillance are these people being subjected to? Unclear. All we know is the AFT was monitoring 826 law-abiding Americans and the FBI was tracking 241 as of April this year. So with that in mind, would you like to donate to gun rights groups without the AFT, FBI, and IRS spying on your activity and putting you on the Group W bench for wrong think? Boy, would I! Well, you're in luck. The Firearms Policy Foundation is now accepting cryptocurrency donations through and given using a wide variety of currencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Doge. Of course, if you want, you can still donate the old-fashioned way by going to firearmsfoundation.org donate. And I shouldn't have to tell you, there are lots of other great 2A groups out there fighting for your liberty. It makes no difference to me who you support, but please do support some of these groups because it takes a lot of money to keep a herd of lawyers fed and watered. I just want to preface this next story by saying the right to keep and bear arms is fundamentally entwined in the right to self-determination. A man cannot be truly free unless he has the means to defend against violence on his person and to resist coercion and robbery by threat of violence. So even if it were possible for gun control to reduce violent crime, the juice wouldn't be worth the squeeze, so to speak. But as Anyone with the sense the good Lord gave a bucket of sand can tell you gun control does not reduce violent crime by any statistically significant margin. And a new study published in Justice Quarterly confirms this obvious fact. Although the entire U.S. has enjoyed a decline in violent crime since the 90s, the draconian laws enacted by Massachusetts have not resulted in any significant change in violent crime. The 1% increase in permit denials did seem to result in an almost 9% increase in robberies, though. As you know, correlation doesn't automatically imply causation, but you can't have causation without correlation, and there is no decrease in violent crime associated with the stricter laws in Massachusetts, so at the very least, gun control didn't help. Industry news. Well, dust off your pork pie hats and horn-rimmed glasses because the 1911 is over. 
Springfield Armory is releasing that perennial hipster pistol wherein John Moses Browning, peace be upon him, perfected the vision he started with the 1911. That's right, they're releasing their version of the Browning High Power, which they're calling the SA-35 because the High Power was officially adopted by Belgium in 1935. The SA-35 is made right here in America and has larger, more modern styled sights with a serrated rear than the original, a beveled magazine well, and an extended thumb safety. It's also sold without the magazine safety, so it ought to have a pretty decent trigger right out of the box. MSRP is $700. Well, friends, that is all I have for you today, but before I go, I just want to take the time to remind you to please check and see whether you are still subscribed to our channel. Our robot overlords and the tube of views know what we want better than we could possibly know for ourselves, so they just go ahead and unsubscribe viewers from any channels they think express wrong think, like yours truly. Now you folks out there in TV land, no censorship makes puppies cry and Captain America is very disappointed. So don't forget to check every now and then just to be sure you're still subscribed to us. And while you're at it, make sure you ring that notification bell so you never miss a word of our gun rights propaganda. And if you want to get email alerts for the best deals, projects we're working on, and the <laughs> hottest stuff you missed on the ARFCOM forums. You'll also find a Linktree link down there in the doobly-doo for our newsletter. And remember, if you want to help us keep bringing you banger content like this, please support the folks who support us. Not only does TNVC.com give you night vision with that cool, refreshing, never bitter taste that goes down smooth, they also have mounts, lights, swag, and all sorts of other gear to make you the bump in the night. I love you. I'm a minority reporter. I'm a future knower. <laughs>